On today's World Insight, a Bay Bridge making money and growth. How links to its neighbors and beyond have put Macau on the fast lane. A finance professor and a monetary watchdog weigh in. I have much concern about how to diversify our economy. Witness Macau in Transition, a World Insight special. The Macau skyline remains the same, but the Macau to be is underway. On 20th anniversary of Macau's return to China, let me take you around the city. Explore Macau's diversified economy, from financial services to tourism and entrepreneurship. See up close Macau's aspiration, cultural diversity, rising infrastructures, and its vibrant younger generation. Macau in transition, only on World Insight. Hello and welcome to Macau in Transition, a special program celebrating 20th anniversary of Macau's return to China. I'm Tian Wei. Today, let's focus on connectivity, starting by talking about the Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge, believed to be one of the most important mega infrastructure projects in today's China. It is 55 kilometer long. It is a system consisting of three cable stayed bridges and one undersea tunnel linked together by two artificial islands. Since its operation in October 2018, it has greatly reduced the cost of transportation and logistics among the three places. On that, I met Professor Jin Chen from the University of Macau. She provides more in-depth analysis. I'm so glad now, first, to be joined by Professor Jin Chen coming from the University of Macau. Professor, good to see you. Tell us more about this bridge from your perspective. Well, it's a great achievement. I mean, from an engineering point of view, uh, it's a fantastic human achievement. And also, uh, a lot of investment has been made by the central government to try to promote economic development in the Great Bay Area. Yeah. Uh, for special for the bridge, it's greatly enhanced the efficiency and the convenience yeah. uh, for travelers, which right. is very, very important for the coordinated tourism development. Yeah. But today, as we are standing here, it's the rush hour here in Macau. People are going back home from work, uh, a lot of noise, and yet we can see on that bridge there are not necessarily as many vehicles as we hope there will be. So what's going on here? What are some of the challenges as we see it? Uh, the infrastructure is ready, uh, is there. Uh, I think that at, at the moment uh, is the issue of how to uh, how to issue the double uh, destinations registration plates. Uh, for example, uh, the car should have a dual uh, registration, one in Macau, one in Hong Kong. But this kind of dual registration is still very limited in so Zhuhai, far. You mean? Uh, both sides, from Zhuhai, between Zhuhai and Hong Kong, between Macau and Hong Kong, uh, the double registration are still quite limited. I see. That is the issue, and that is the reason why we do not see as many cars as we want. But, you know, what does that mean? This is one place, and also the land port linking the three places together is another place. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, we we'll also see the Hongqin development. How should we put all of these things into a whole picture? putting the pieces into a whole picture. Yeah. Well, actually, the grid has greatly enhanced the traveling. Uh, that makes um, the airport, uh, the air traffic uh, is, quite, uh, is quite good, uh, can lift to air congestions to, uh, to a certain extent, uh, especially to share airport facilities among the region, Hong Kong Airport, Macau Airport, and Zhuhai Airport. So that bridge re greatly reduced the travel time that make uh, traveling possible be among the area. Yeah. Um, so they complement each other. Yeah. Usually infrastructure is the first step, yeah. as people believe. But yeah. what's the next step? Well, next step is the, the policy, how to make um, the traffic regulations um, applicable to the three areas. The registration place is one thing. Other thing is the uh, um, road uh, sign, um, road uh, regulations uh, for uh, how to integrate in three areas. Mm -hmm. It's still, still quite challenging. 
Right. Well, after this bridge, we're going to see the only land port among the three places, Hong Kong, Macau, and yeah. Zhuhai. Let's see how it works there. For now, I want to thank you, Professor, for coming out and also joining us for this discussion. My pleasure. Thank, thank you. you so much. And for now, let's go and visit the joint arrival and the departure port among Hong Kong, Zhuhai, and Macau. right in front of the departures and rival halls among Hong Kong, Zhuhai, and Macau. Let's go in and check how the procedure works for a common traveler. This is the sand table model showcasing how it works, all the procedures. As you can see, I am standing right there in the very middle of the sand table model. So after security check, which is on my right side, one only needs about 10 to 15 minutes all together to either go to Hong Kong or Zhuhai from Macau. Not many people here today as winter is usually the slow time, but during the busiest time of the year, I was told about 50,000 people need to go through this area every day. That's why they have prepared a lineup area for people to stand in queues. Meanwhile, there's also a duty free shopping area for leisure and to walk around. But the most important thing is this what's called a joint menu inspection channels. Both Zhuhai and Macau work out this procedure for people to go through here one to two minutes. However, without this, it would take about one to two hours. This is the most important part of this joint inspection channel. As you can see behind me, officers from both Zhuhai and Macau are sitting side by side to work on this process to cut the time of traveling and greatly increases the efficiency. That was quite a fun trip, isn't it? When you have the infrastructure, when you also have the favorable policies, how to connect the two together and really make things happen? Let connectivity be the key word. And how will connectivity contribute eventually to the economic diversification of Macau? On those questions, I invited back Professor Jin Chen from the University of Macau into my special studio in Macau, and she provides more in-depth analysis. And I'm so glad to be joined once again by Professor Jin Chen, who is the Dean of Faculty of Business Administration, and also Chair Professor in Accounting and Finance from the University of Macau. What a pleasure, Professor, to see you once again. Thank you. I remember the trip we made together. It was fun. Yes, definitely. <laughs> so tell me more about the significance of the place like Hangqin. More possibility for economic diversification, isn't it, for Macau? Economic diversification is very important for Macau's development. Uh, for years, uh, Macau's economy was really focused on the gaming industry. Now uh, things change because the Great Bay Area has created a lot of opportunities mm -hmm. for Macau to promote uh, more economic development and more de industry. Mm -hmm. um, Hengqin uh, development really is a good opportunity for Macau uh, because the land and space in Macau is quite limited. Yeah. Um, that is a kind of uh, restriction for Macau's uh, diversified economic development. Um, about four years ago, the central government set up a free trade zone in Hengqin and tried very hard to promote coordinated development. Land of Macau. is limited. Real estate business, of course, is money earning. Mm -hmm. However, how to avoid mm -hmm. the fact that in some other places, mm real estate has become the only industry and that dragged the whole economy down, particularly when it comes to potential. How Macau is likely to avoid that when developing Hengqin? 
Um, in this February, uh, central government set up a development plan uh, to promote Hengxin and more economic coordination with Macau. Mm. Um, more space does not mean uh, real estate speculations. Mm. That is something we should we should try to avoid, actually. Um, in Macau, the, it has a, a lot of advantage, also have some traditions in certain areas, and that should leverage the strength of Hengqin, particularly in Zhuhai City. So, for example, tourism, mm. uh, integrated tourism development, uh, that penetrates a lot of uh, uh, areas, especially uh, very good in increasing people's living standard and also promote the local economic development. So one of the things is that um, to coordinate mm. with Guangdong province. Mm. So how does that work? Because earlier, nothing like that happened, mm. right? This is the very first time because of Hengqin. Mm -hmm. And it's the localities of Guangdong province also. It's not about the province as a whole. So how does that work? What is the chemistry so far you are reading? Right. Uh, tourism is certain one area both sides are interested. Other area both sides can share uh, a lot of good practice uh -huh. is the Chinese medicine. Traditional Chinese medicine uh, has been one of the, uh, the key interests uh, in Macau, both from the government viewpoint, from research and the investment. For example, University of Macau and also other universities has done a very good research and published a lot of uh, results in uh -huh. Chinese medicine. And also also in Hengqin, in Zhuhai, uh, medical study also has a lot of interest mm. and the people try to set up some research development. So if we work together, certainly can create some synergies. Mm. But then how to share the benefits? That's also a big issue, isn't it? That's the dissemination. We, we talk, talk about dissemination uh, of the result. Again, traditional Chinese medicine development has a big market mm. uh, in Great Bay area, not only in mainland China, also in Hong Kong, um, in other parts of uh, China, even in the one uh, about one road, right. um, in the, the neighboring countries do have a great interest, and also uh, they want to share the outcomes, the best result of the Chinese uh, traditional medicine. Right. I see you have a lot of great plans together with many here in Macau about Hengqin. Another thing is about the Greater Bay Area, as you mentioned earlier. Yeah. The bridge certainly is serving as a great infrastructure connecting all the places together. Now, you also already have the infrastructure. The thing now is, mm -hmm. what are you going to do with the infrastructure? Mm -hmm. And whether you are taking great advantage of the infrastructure for the real connectivity. Mm -hmm. Right. A uh, few things I think will be very, very uh, important uh, to take the advantage of the, the bridge. Uh, Hong Kong, uh, Zhuhai, Macau Bridge is actually open opportunity, a lot of trading opportunity, mobility of labor and uh, infrastructure sharing and more importantly it will divert human resource mm -hmm. and the capital resource from um, Hong Kong, Macau uh, to uh, the western part of the Great Bay Area which is relatively lag behind from mm -hmm. the eastern part of the Great Area. So the opening of the bridge actually provide excellent facilities, infrastructure, and that will input uh, a lot of you know, good things from Hong Kong and Macau to develop neighboring province um, near the Great Bay Area, mm. not only to the west part of Great Bay Area, but also can uh, spread to uh, province like Guangxi and Hainan. I see the neighboring provinces. That's uh, right. It's a radi ra radiation effect. We hope that will be the case, right? <laughs> <laughs> but you know, when you think about the Greater Bay Area, the plan was done a few years ago. Mm -hmm. However, we have seen some recent circumstances changes. Mm -hmm. What does that mean for the earlier plan? Should the plan be adjusted according to Macau's perspective? What does that mean when it comes to both opportunities and also challenges for Macau now? Strategy, setting up a strategy uh, is one thing which is very important because you set up the direction for the development. But how to make 
a soft landing, how to implement the strategy is a big challenge. Mm. It relates uh, a lot of things, not only for the economic reason, for the culture, for the tradition, the way of people thinking, mm. uh, how to change people's perception. Uh, that is not easy. Um, if uh, we set up a coordinated development, we've got to make sure we've got to find the common belief mm -hmm. of, of, of people and make sure every party is act actively engaged. That's the key. As for you may know, that could be a gradual process, but there has to be a set timetable for people to work on together mm -hmm. for efficiency as well. Mm -hmm. So how would you reconcile, you know, on the one hand, bring the momentum as circumstances change, on the other hand, efficiency, get things done. You may have heard of this. It used to be uh, two inspections in two places. Yeah. Uh, now they moved the Macau site uh, and merged together to Hongqin. Mm -hmm. It's actually it's a very efficient and effective way to promote things being done. Um, people will save a lot of time and that uh, efficiency uh, also promote sharing culture and the practice. What about Hong Kong, for example? Uh, the circumstances changes. Uh, Macau used to be not as competitive, of course, uh, with Hong Kong. But now, uh, what does that mean for Macau? Um, it means Macau has uh, more opportunities to work together uh, with um, Hong Kong, uh, the companies in Hong Kong, and also companies in uh, Great Bay areas. Mm -hmm. uh, used to be, Macau used to be quite isolated. Um, mm -hmm. a, it, it, it is an international city in terms of language, uh, in terms of food, uh, in terms of retailing, um, but actually um, they can do a lot of more. Um, they have not really integrated in joint project mm -hmm. together with Hong Kong and the other part of Great Bay Area. Mm. So this integration and uh, also uh, provide open, actually open a lot of revenues for, for Macau. Yes, indeed. Uh, let me talk a little bit about how Macau is going to diversify its economy. Mm -hmm. When I came here, first day, day one, first hour, even the first talk I had with anyone here in Macau, people tell me, we are aspiring to diversify our economy. In the future, it's not going to be just the gaming industry. We want more. But the question is how, isn't it? Financial services, Professor, is many. It's the thing that many talk about, but how viable is it? How fast can they really develop? You're a professor of finance. I'm sure you know the secrets here. <laughs> well, well um, we talk about the financial industry um, in Macau. Um, the, it is possible to develop financial industry. Why is that? Because uh, the wealthy uh, the, of the society, uh, they are quite you know, rich in terms of GDP. They rank the top three in the world. Um, then a lot of um, money and capital has been raised, but we need to find a good use of it. Um, that's the key thing. That's the actually lay out the foundation for the financial development. Mm. Uh, the capital is already there. It's available. Um, how, where, how we are going to find a home for them. Mm. It, how? How then? Um, what are some of the ways? First, I think we can uh, develop a lot of good financial products, which we have not seen in the banks, uh, in the other other uh, sort of related industry in Macau. What are the financial products you're talking Finan about? We talk about financial leasing, mm -hmm. uh, portfolio uh, uh, for the wealth management. Okay. Um, we also talk about the possibility of a green finance. Mm. Um, in Macau, uh, there's no much you know manufacturing industry, and they focus on the tourism and the gaming industry. So actually, it's a good opportunity to promote green finance products in Macau. Your link with the mainland certainly provides a lot of opportunity, even in financial services. Uh, Yuan denominated bonds was issued earlier, yes. uh, Professor, uh, not long ago. But what does that mean? Uh, how much transformation do you see when it comes to potential? Yeah. We talk about the financial market. The two major financial uh, uh, products in the financial market, one is a corporate bond, uh, one is uh, shares, mm. uh, stocks. Um, we already uh, set up um, uh, the renminbi denominated bond uh, in October um, that was launched uh, 
uh, very successfully, raised a lot of money, mm. attract a lot of investors. Um, we um, also aim to um, develop more, for example, shares. When we talk about the financial market, it's not only the products we are interested in. More importantly, what kind of investors mm -hmm. will be attracted to Macau. That's true. There are a lot of possibilities and certainly Macau's position uh, as the tie between China and the Portuguese speaking country is very important. In Portugal, uh, we, we have done some research before actually. Okay, tell me yeah, more about that. For um, financial collaborations and even for tr general trade of investment, language and the culture is a big thing for both parties. Yeah. Then from that, Macau has a nature advantage to um, put all the Portuguese uh, speaking countries together. Certainly, that is a one attraction to them. Uh, in terms of Portuguese speaking country, we, the largest uh, um, uh, country is uh, Portugal and uh, Brazil. Yeah. Uh, in Portugal, the stock market is called Euronext. In Brazil, it's called the Brazil stock market. It's a 1,500 companies listed in Portugal mm. and about 350 companies listed in Brazil. And I'm sure if we develop more uh, financial market in both in terms of bond and also in terms of shares, that would be very appealing to them mm -hmm. because they share the language, no language barriers, and they are understanding the culture quite well. Two things. Uh, one is about the economies of the two countries you just mentioned, mm -hmm. both that of Portugal and Brazil. Certainly, they are not at the highest time mm -hmm. of their economy. So how, on the one hand, to promote connectivity with these countries, but on the other hand, to avoid some of the pitfalls as a result of their economic development stage? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. Uh, apart, in addition to the uh, Portuguese speaking countries, uh, we're looking for a mixed portfolio. Mm -hmm. That means uh, attract more investors from different parts of the world. So that will actually make them to share their good practice and also for the risk sharing as right. well. Uh, for example, uh, a lot of uh, uh, Macau uh, residents and also Macau companies uh, has been uh, listed or invested in the Hong Kong Stock Exchange. Mm. About 10 uh, Macau shares, uh, Macau-based shares uh, listed there. If uh, we have more developed financial market in mm. Macau, this uh, type of investors will be certainly do a second cross listing right. uh, in Macau. Well, that sounds exciting, but it also has a lot to do with whether some of the platforms and infrastructure will be established and whether the time is ripe for that. One of the things I really have to ask you, since you are an educator and also you are a professor trying to nurture many talents here in Macau, is the lack of talent or lack of as many talents as possible that Macau needs for all of these possibilities you talk about, Professor. How to make sure the best talents can stay here, first of all, mm -hmm. and the talents coming from outside, including many of the students coming from mainland, for example, studying in your university, eventually could stay here if they want to. Uh, at the moment, the most important thing and uh, we would like to see is uh, to uh, a more efficient and a simplified uh, administrative uh, procedure. For example, a Macau ID, uh, it takes a very long time uh, to obtain from the day you, you apply, then from, from the day you get it. Mm. Uh, that actually uh, make uh, a lot of talent or academic uh, coming to Macau uh, they be hesitate a to go bottom of that hesitate, process. not only for themselves, also for the family. Yeah. And the family settlement is a very, very important. It could have a bottleneck for the real talents to stay. Huh? Exactly. If you're saying it, even for ID card, if it takes about a, a year to get it, that actually um, do not give people a home feeling. You know, they should really improve the administrative procedures, mm. make people feel home, give them a lot of convenience, uh, work and live here. Yes, indeed. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Jean, Professor Chen. I learned a lot through our conversation. I hope many of the things that we talk about will eventually come true. Thank you, Professor. Thank you.